morning. I'm Carol Yu. I have two daughters, uh, Dara uh, Bamboo, she's eight, and I have Elena, who is going to be 15. Her nickname is 107. Um, we've been involved at Camp Kesson here at UCLA since it started, 2004, 2005. Um, around that time, that was when my husband, George, was diagnosed with a rare form of non-smokers lung cancer. He had about 50 tumors in his lungs, and uh, they were in his, okay, I'm sorry to cry over it. Um, uh, tumors in his ribs and his vertebrae. And he was given six to 12 months to live. And so as all of you know, an unexpected diagnosis like this is just really devastating to your family. So when George started his clinical trial, I had to figure out how do I support my kids? who at the time were nine and uh, three. Um, I remember when the oncologist told us, uh, the very last thing he told us when we walked out of the appointment was, uh, your life will never be the same. And I really didn't understand what that meant. But five years later, I do totally understand the meaning of those seven words and the impact of them. Um, we found out about Camp Kesson through the Ted Mann Family Resource Center, which is the therapist group at UCLA. And so this year will be Elena's fifth or sixth year and Dara's third year. I feel really honored to speak to you about Elena's and Dara's unbelievable experiences at camp and express my gratitude for all of you counselors. And that, that's why I cry, because of the counselors. Okay, the first year that Elena went to camp, um, counselors told me that she just listened at the bedside, bedtime chats. Um, I think a lot of it was because the whole situation was so new to her, having to deal with cancer. And uh, also a lot of it was that the, uh, most of the kids in her unit, their moms were affected by breast cancer. So the second year, Elena met a few others whose fathers had cancer and then she began to open up. Each subsequent year by going to camp, she met more friends that had the same situation, and it really helped her to grow through this whole process. Every year, I can't wait for my kids to go to camp so that I have a break. <laughs> <laughs> but I also can't wait for them to go to camp because I can't wait to hear about the fun times that they've had when they get back. I hear stories about all of you guys doing silly things, funny songs, throwing each other in the pool, licking trees, and, and doing <laughs> other crazy things. Um, I hear about the great outdoor experiences they have. Last year, Elena loved the teen overnight hike where they slept out under the stars. Elena loved, I mean, Dara loves the polar bear swim. She loved to get up at 6.30 in the morning and go in the chilly pool with everyone. And uh, they have funny certificates and awards that they've won. Dara last year had uh, the certificate that said she was the best storyteller. Uh. <laughs> and Dara also loves having to lick a tree or kiss a tree. Because if you say another camper's real name, like I should be calling them Bamboo in 107, but I would probably have had to lick a tree like 10 times already. <laughs> so, but most importantly, without words, um, they tell me that this is an experience that will be with them for life. It's the one totally incredible thing that's come out of this whole cancer ordeal. Um, <clears throat> two summers ago, the girls were at Camp Kesson, and the day before they came home, <clears throat> my husband went on hospice. And the Saturday that I was supposed to pick him up the next day, at the federal building, I was at his bedside uh, with the hospice nurse who was doing the first check of him. And she told me that I couldn't leave. So it, it was a race. And two of the counselors, um, Scooby and Smurf, drove Elena and Dara home for, for me as soon as the bus got back to the federal building. I believe that George waited for the girls because only 15 minutes later he passed away. I was so thankful that the counselors went beyond their jobs and brought them home for me. 
Then, <coughs> a month later, we had George's memorial. It was a huge celebration with over 600 people. I remember standing outside the door, greeting people, and there was a huge ramp, and everyone had to walk up the ramp. And oh, I looked up, and there were 15 counselors walking up the ramp, coming to support me and the girls. They put together a collage of the girls and them at camp, and they put it in a photo frame, and they all signed it. And it was really meaningful to us. Even now, there are several kind, um, sweet, and loving counselors who continue to meet with us sporadically for brunch and have a play date with Dara. We even have three graduate counselors. One of them was here, Sundown, Sonic, and Speedy. They live on our street now. And uh, Pebbles and Gumby, who's here, live in our neighborhood, too. Every time the girls see them, they're so excited. We we'll drive by, I think we drove by a couple weeks ago and Dara saw Gumby, she's like, look, 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 it's Gumby. And every time we see Sundown walking the dog, Dara's like, let's stop, let's stop. So my girls are so excited to see them. I'm so happy that they've established a relationship with these positive, energetic role models. I'm so thankful for this. Every counselor that I've met through this camp has meant so much to my girls and to me. I'm so happy and believe that out of this misfortune, we've made lasting and enduring human connections with people who truly get it, who've really helped to contribute to the happiness of my kids, and who've helped them to move on and enjoy their lives. Please support Camp Kessim in whatever way you can. It's the most admirable group of young people who've truly devoted their life to this work and to our kids. Thank you.